with us via telephone as well is Art Tom. He is the NRA State Director in Legislative Affairs in West Virginia. Good morning, Art. How are you, sir? I'm well. How are you all? Great, thank you. Appreciate your patience hanging on as long as you did. As you may have guessed, we were a little busy in the previous hour. Yeah, that's a uh, hot item right now, I'm, I'm sure. It, it is. It's, it's uh, a little hotter than campus carry is uh, right now, but uh, that always stirs up a good bit of social media debate as well. Art, can you tell me where campus carry legislation is right now in the Capitol? Absolutely. So it's... Uh It had been referred to the uh, Senate Committee on Judiciary. It passed out of that committee uh, with only one person uh, on a voice vote with only one person against. That was Senator Mike Caputo, which was expected. Um, It now is uh, has had its first reading today. It is on second reading in the West Virginia Senate, where it is expected to uh, to move along, uh, hopefully without uh, any amendments. And then uh, tomorrow it should uh, pass the Senate floor and head over to the House where uh, it is, uh, where they are eagerly waiting. Very good. Now, uh, in regards to the campus reaction on this, uh, it's been, uh, I'm not talking about those who go to school, but those who are in charge of these colleges. Uh, The reaction I've seen has been negative against the passage of campus carry art. In the past, it has. Um, this year, it is. Uh, look, the what you're going to hear from the universities, uh, the state colleges and universities, is um, they would prefer local control. Um, they would prefer to make decisions. Um, but understanding the political climate and the broad support for this legislation, um, they would prefer it to stay in the in the form that it. It left the Senate Judiciary Committee uh, last week. Uh, we agree with that. Um, you know, we worked, as, as you may recall, uh, back several years ago, we worked with uh, the colleges to try to get to a point where they could be neutral or at least, you know, the, the best scenario it could be for the state colleges and universities. And this is, this is that place. One of the things that people need to recall or, or to keep in mind is that it is already 100% lawful for anybody not otherwise prohibited from possessing a firearm to do so on a state college and university state college and university campus without a permit anywhere they want to go the only repercussions being if you are an employee or a student you can face disciplinary action for breaking their rules up to including termination of employment or expulsion from from college. Um, The big thing that this bill does is protects those individuals, the employee and the student from that disciplinary action should they uh, not violate uh, the rules that can be put in place after this bill should pass. Joe Ferretti. Uh, So, Art, uh, first of all, good morning to you. Uh, Art, this is where it gets a little confusing for me. If it already is the law, that I can carry openly without a permit on any university grounds, state university grounds, why then this legislation? Openly or concealed, but uh, uh, under the constitutional carry law. Well, the, the reason for this legislation, again, is to protect individuals that are employees or students of the of the state college or university. Right now, those folks are not protected, right? They could be uh, although they, they would not face any criminal charges for carrying a firearm on a state college or uh, campus, they could be, uh, again, expelled from school or fired from their employment. They're, they're forced to choose now between protecting themselves and uh, higher education or you know, feeding their family by uh, you know, their method of employment, in this case being working for a, a college. Have there been incidents where either faculty members or students have been expelled or disciplined by a university for either concealing or open carry? Sure. Yep. And, uh, and beyond that, you know, the, uh, you look at some of the, uh, especially in the past, you know, uh, this year, again, the, uh, the language is a little bit more tempered, but you look at the, uh, uh, the words in the past and as, you know, Rob pointed out, you know, the last time this came around, 
And, uh, you know, when they're so feverishly against this type of legislation or against the idea of a, uh, of a student or a faculty, me- faculty member choosing to protect themselves uh, in what, you know, criminals would consider a gun-free zone, um, you know, it just makes sense that it, it, those folks need to be protected, especially, you know, we're, we're looking, we're not talking about somebody's private employment. We're not talking about private colleges or universities in the state. We're talking about public state colleges, universities, people that take a significant amount of our tax dollars. So we're talking about WVU and Marshall and Shepherd University, those that are state related. Yeah, this is only only uh, applies to state colleges and universities uh, in West Virginia. Well, to play devil's advocate here, you can understand, I'm sure, the argument that, that's being raised against this proposed legislation, which would be, you know, that, are, are we not inviting uh, a further risk on our campuses, allowing students who would be ages, you know, 21 and older if they get a permit, 18 to 21 if they get a provisional permit, aren't we inviting risk onto our campuses to allow these students to possess firearms? Sure. Well, you know, and, and Joe, you, you've been around uh, in the political uh, world for long enough, and you know, you and I have chatted for, for quite uh, many times that uh, you many know, times. they said this when, there was, when the right to carry laws came out. They said this when the, uh, when the concealed carry permit uh, laws came out, when constitutional carry came out. They, they talked about the blood running through the streets and all the havoc that was to come, and, and none of it has been founded. And in fact, if you look at the, the, the 11 states that have uh, specifically addressed this issue and uh, by law uh, admitted firearms to be carried on a college campus for personal protection, uh, crime has went down. And again, I'm not going to say that it, it has been because of campus carry, but it certainly didn't. Uh, it certainly didn't drive uh, the statistics up as as the people want to believe. What does drive the, the statistics up? What we cannot argue is that in every one of these shootings, it's a gun-free zone. Bill Stubblefield. Uh, yeah, uh, Rob, you mentioned a while ago uh, the pushback from the uh, uh, the administrators in the President University. There's also been quite a uh, quite a lot of reaction from the students themselves and uh, West Virginia University, the student body, government as a as a group, uh, unanimously said they were opposed to this legislation. Uh, or to have a question about the exemption exceptions, uh, stadiums, lar- uh, assembly of groups larger than one thousand, daycare. Resident halls, other than common areas, and areas where there's no other security devices in place, such as metal detectors. Why the reason for the exceptions? Uh, some of those were uh, at the request of the state colleges and universities. Um, you know, and we said, look, if you're going to uh, put a, a, a cop and a metal detector there, you can close off an area. I mean, the thing is, is that in what our argument is and has always been is, is if you cannot protect me, if you cannot guarantee the protection of myself or my, or my children that may be a, a, a attending this university or my, uh, my spouse or my friends that may be working there, then they should be able to do it themselves. But if the co- And we told the college, you know, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to allow guns anywhere in these sensitive areas as you would consider them. Just make sure that Nobody else is carrying in there. Put a cop there. Put a put a metal, de- metal detector. Uh, protect our students and our loved ones the same way you would if, when you walk into a courthouse in the state of West Virginia. The same way you do when you walk into the state capitol of West Virginia. Okay. Uh, and that, that's all they have to do. But in regards to the student government of WVU and Bill, you probably know this uh, as well as as I do. Um, if you keep up, you keep it up with uh, enough to uh, to know what they that they came out in total opposition of this. You probably are, are well understand that it is the most liberal student government ever to be seen uh, on WVU's campus, and that's not my words; that's theirs. Okay, uh, you, you, the argument you made about metal detectors that makes sense. What about uh, the exemption for state uh, assemblies larger than one thousand? Um, well, we had originally our our language originally called for anything larger or five thousand a seating capacity of five thousand or larger. Um, 
you know, WVU and, and Marshall had uh, requested that number to uh, to be lower so that, you know, again, when we're talking about the Coliseum, talking about the football games, things of that nature, where there's a lot of people compacted in it in one area. So, uh, you know, we, we looked at that, dropped it down. The, uh, the smaller state colleges and universities um, had some concerns. Uh, the interested parties got together, said, okay, look, a thousand or more seating capacity, uh, we're okay with that. I, I'm not sure why okay with that. I would think there'd be a greater risk with larger assemblies than there would be with just, say, five to ten people in a in a room. Where five to ten people, you have to have, uh, uh, you can have concealed carry. Over a thousand people, you do not have to have, uh, uh, you can conceal carry. You can, you don't have to it, have well, there, When you go into, the bill, the reason there is is that, you know, when you're going to these games, um, you know, you're walking through metal detectors, you're walking through, uh, you know, officers or, or campus security where they're wanding you thereafter. You know, they're they're trying to ensure that that, uh, you know, nobody's going in there with a uh, with a weapon of any sort. Yeah, I'm not sure I've seen people wand me as I go to a football game. Maybe they do. But I, I just have not been to those games. So. Back to you, Joe. Uh, Art, if – you know, I'm sure the distinction uh, that you would draw for me not being able to bring a firearm into a courthouse or into a government proceeding, such as what happens at the state capitol, is the fact that they do have security out front to make sure that nobody enters with a firearm, which means that the danger that any individual would be exposed to is minimized, correct? That's right. So if a university would adopt a policy of having metal detectors before you enter dormitories, before you enter uh, a building that houses classrooms, before you enter a sporting event of less than 1,000 people, would their desire not to have guns on campus then also, would, it, would also that, that theory apply, that, that they are checking to make sure that nobody has a gun, thus the danger to any one individual has been minimized? Well, in this bill, it, it allows them to do just that. that if they if they shut up, if they completely uh, secure these facilities, any of these buildings, they can restrict a firearm within that that in within that building. The exception being is, uh, you know, in a dormitory, either they have to have on site lockers when you go in, or they have to offer personal safes in the dormitory room. And that's because you know you're going to have to travel back and forth from one building to another. You know, if we were all in one and enclosed facility the entire time you were there this would make this a whole lot different but you know when when you have to walk across campus uh you know your your risk goes right back to where it was uh before and they cannot protect everybody outside of the uh the building um, and that's that's critical as well well with regard to the dormitories then you you mentioned that the the student who possesses the firearm would have to secure it either in a locker or someplace in their dorm room how would that be uh, how would that be enforced? It's up to the, that's up to the university to enforce. So, uh, so it's good. once this law passed, and I, I'm sure it's going to pass our legislature, because we know you're in a very effective lobbyist. Um, <laughs> how? So it's up to the university then to come up with the resources to make sure that the uh, the individual students who possess firearms are securing them. They're going to have to come up with the uh, the manpower and the wherewithal to be able to enforce those rules. Is, is that what's anticipated? That's yeah, that's correct. Um, but at the same time, you know, to think that that this isn't happening right now is uh, would 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 be bad. You know, it's obviously, and I'm sure um, everybody on this on this phone call knows somebody when you were in college that possessed a firearm, if not people on this call, right? And, uh, you know, and the, the laws be, or the rules be damned. Uh, the laws were the same as they are now, but the rules be damned. Uh, we uh, did what whatever the person felt was necessary to, to keep themselves protected. Um, we don't anticipate, just like every other state college university across the, uh, across the country that has put this into place, a significant impact on the schools or really frankly who's carrying and who's not carrying again we're just protecting uh those those individuals that are working there or students attending school when we look at places like texas and, and i know that 
and this is one of the things that Senator Caputo brought up, he was like, oh, you know, the, the fiscal note that's going to come of this. Well, you look at a state like Texas, we look at a state like Idaho, both of those states, their fiscal note on this was zero. So, it, and, and it could be the same for West Virginia University or Marshall. Well, you know, it's all dependent on, on what they decide that they want to do moving forward. They don't, they don't have to do anything, or they can lock down everything. Um, and it, it all is, is up to the, uh, to the State College or University. Art, on that note, we have uh, run out of time. I know yours was a bit abbreviated with us today because we ran a little long on the first hour. I appreciate your availability today, sir. Absolutely. I, I always appreciate you all having me on, and I uh, hope you have a great day. You too. Thanks, Art.